Sunday morning in Prince Edward Island. We are so glad that you are here with us today, and we're looking forward to a, a, great, a great time together this morning. Um, for those that are visiting online, we welcome you as well. And whether you're looking at us today or someday down the road in the future, we hope that the, uh, the power and the presence of God will touch every heart and every life, and that we will experience Him in ways that we've never experienced Him before. So we welcome you to this uh, celebration of worship today. Special uh, welcome to Ed and Linda Durong, who are leading us in music and that, uh, that worship uh, this morning. So we're looking forward to having them uh, lead us in a few moments. First of all, uh, a couple of announcements, and that would be uh, mostly in your bulletin, but just a quick reminder that uh, the, uh, there is fellowship following the service, and you're welcome to, uh, to join with us over here. And uh, secondly, that um, there is a prayer uh, meeting, a Bible study meeting on Wednesday at 6.30 here at the church. And the men continue to meet on Tuesday mornings at 8 o'clock at Smitty's. Anyone is welcome, any male is welcome to join us uh, at that time. And finally, the baby bottle uh, campaign from the Island Pregnancy Center is wrapping up next week on Father's Day. And so if you have a bottle somewhere collecting your loose change and coins and bills, whatever you got, uh, they're supposed to be submitted or brought back or returned uh, around about this time next week. We're going to uh, just remind you also of uh, your offering options. Uh, if you would like to contribute to the work of this church in the community, then there is an email uh, for e-transfer, which you will have in front of you, and we encourage you to take advantage of that. Of course, cash and checks are welcome as well. Uh, those that would like to contribute to the Ukraine response are invited to do that as well through your, through your offering, and offering and just uh, stipulate where that's going. All right, we're going to get right into our, our worship celebration together, so let's join with prayer, and then we'll turn it over to Ed and Linda, and we'll go from there. Join me in prayer. God, we thank you for this uh, day that you've given to us. This is the day that you have made. You have invited us to be glad and to rejoice in it. So we come together to, to be glad and to rejoice. Irregardless of what the week has held for us, what the last day or month has held for us, some have had difficult roads and some have had easier roads. Whatever our baggage is that we're carrying, we pray that we can lay it at your feet today, that we can trust you, look to you, lean on you. And we invite you by the power of your spirit to come and meet with every one of us whether here present at this moment or online sometime in the future. Meet with us at this moment, and may we experience all that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Permission to start, sir. All yours. <laughs> Unless I forgot something. No. Well, it's good to see you all this morning. Uh, as we're reading over the uh, bulletin, my, uh, sis my sister thought it was the baby bottle champagne. <laughs> and uh, I said, no, they don't get them started quite that early. But, uh, <clears throat> but anyway, it's great to be here this morning. What a great day it is. And uh, our first song is called Living by Faith. And uh, it's, uh, that's what we're doing, isn't it? We're living by faith. I like the way it starts off. I care not today what tomorrow may bring. If shadow or sunshine or rain, the Lord I know rules over everything. And all my worry, hey, it's vain. So let's sing it all together. Will I care not today what tomorrow may bring? If shadow or sunshine or rain. Trusting, confiding, 
And I feel no alarm. Wow, that's uh, amazing. And uh, it's great to, uh, as I'm singing that, I'm looking out at faith uh, during that song about faith. <laughs> Living by faith, and I feel no alarm. And uh, the Bible says in uh, uh, Isaiah 58, verse 1, it says, uh, Cry aloud. And don't hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. So if you're, you're here today and you're wondering whether you should sing loud or, or soft, Isaiah says, cry aloud. Don't hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. So if you're uh, lifting up your voice like a harmonica, <laughs> then maybe you need to go to a trumpet sound. This one's called Jesus Say. If at any time you feel that you want to sit, you can sit and stand. Uh, Dance? I don't know. Maybe. Jesus saves. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves. Bring the news to every land Climb the sleeps and cross the wave Onward tis our Lord's command Jesus saves, Jesus saves Jesus saves, Jesus 
says he does. Wafting on the rolling tide, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Tell to sinners far and wide, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing the islands of the sea, and go back to ocean caves. Earth shall keep her jubilee. Say, amen. Sing above the battle strife. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. By his death and endless life. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing it softly through the gloom. When the earth for mercy prayed. Come on now. Sing and triumph. Saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Give the winds a mighty voice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let the nations now rejoice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shout salvation full and free. Highest hills and deepest caves, this our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Give the Lord a clap offering this morning, because all the praise, all the glory, all the time goes to him, right? And uh, hey, did you read that thing in the newspaper the other day where they found bones on the moon? I guess the cow didn't make it after all. Uh, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but uh, wow, you guys, when you smile, you look 20 years younger. You should turn to the person next to you and say, you know, you look even better than the last time I saw you. Yeah. This is one called higher ground, and that's where I want to be living all the time, right? On higher ground. You just ask anybody who's come through a flood. They want to go to higher ground, and that's where I want to go too. And uh, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Let's do that. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining, gaining every day. Still praying as I Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these are found, prayer, my aim is higher ground. Go on now. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Higher ground, I want to 
Here we go. Saints, where? Go. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. Oh, higher plane than I have found. Lord, plan. My feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height. You sing it. Here we go. sure because we got we're going to slow it up a little bit higher ground yeah wow why should I feel discouraged wouldn't it be great from the time you were born till the time you you left you were never discouraged you never had an ache or a pain you never ever felt any of those things but life was just, as they say, one big bowl of cherries. But you know, I've had a bowl of cherries before, and they're the pits. <laughs> and uh, all sunshine is just not, not the way to go. As a matter of fact, I believe uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18 says, In everything, give thanks. Amen. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, I used to think... Whatever I'm going through, that's God's will. Well, I guess it is. But he really says, no matter what you're going through, you've got to give thanks. Because that's the will of God, that you give thanks. I mean, I can give thanks real quick for a turkey dinner. Or, uh, or whatever. Or if someone pays the bill at a restaurant for me. Give thanks real quick. But when my kitchen is flooding because I left the tap on, and there's water all over the floor... Nah, not so much. But even then, we're asked to give thanks because, you know what, I'm going to have to clean it up anyway. So I may as well praise the Lord while I'm doing it. And I find when, when you do that, your attitude changes. And someone said that your attitude will determine your altitude. And, uh, you know, I've been, I've been living on that higher ground ever since I decided to go with that one, with that one verse. I found my energy is better. I found my attitude's better, and I just find life is better. And uh, so I recommend, uh, I recommend 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18 to you this morning. In everything, give thanks. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? And sure as there's fur on a pussycat, that's going to happen. And I've been trying to... When I'm, whenever my feet hit the floor these days, I say, Lord, what do you got in store for me today? Good or bad, doesn't matter. I'm going to give you thanks for it all. So somebody wrote this song. I think, I think the name is Ethel Waters. Wrote this song way back when. And uh, his eye is on the sparrow. So if his eye is on the sparrow, 
I think he could take pretty good care of us. Amen. All right. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion? My constant friend is he, is I his own sparrow, and I know he watches me, is I his own Each 
one of us, 24-7. We can depend on him. No matter what it is that you're going through, he's watching out for you. Just like he's watching out for that sparrow, he's watching out for you. Let's join together in a moment of prayer. Father, we thank you this morning that you're watching out for each one of us. Even when it doesn't really feel like it. Even when we can't quite find you in the midst of our lives. Even when we're not quite sure what tomorrow or even the next hour holds for us. We thank you that you never leave us. You never walk away from us. Father, this morning we lift up this congregation, all that are gathered here and all that are listening online. We, we lift up each one before you in prayer and we pray that you would come and, and touch us at our point of need today, whatever that is. Some are struggling with addictions. Some are struggling with financial issues. Others are dealing with unhealthy relationships. God, you know the situation that we face today. You know the thing that we woke up this morning thinking about and the thing that will 
last week where we read in chapter 2 of the book of Acts. So this week we're in chapter 3, and uh, we'll read the first 16 verses, and then we'll skip down and pick up a couple of verses towards the end to tie it all together. Let's listen carefully to the word of the Lord. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask for alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. And so he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. And Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And so he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened to him. Now as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us, as though by our own power or godliness we made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and killed the Prince of Life whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, who you see and know. And yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Yes, and all the prophets, from Samuel and those who follow, as many as have spoken, have foretold these days. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your seed all the families of the earth will be blessed. Well, may God grant us wisdom and understanding as we apply these words to our hearts and our lives today. This is an incredible story, and as, as it is with many stories in the Bible, it's like something you'd see in a movie. It's almost unbelievable. It's just like way off the charts. And we have this, this great story of Jesus intervening in the life of a very needy human being. And we're going to unpack this and look at it a bit this morning, but let me just kind of go back and, and review a little bit for us. We are in this incredible season of life right now where, as I mentioned last week, the, the page has been turned. We're in a new chapter, folks. And we've come through this season where, where we've uh, recognized and celebrated the death and the resurrection of Jesus, where the ransom was paid for, for the lives of men and women all over the world. And then, and then we come to the ascension of Jesus where he left his, his followers and, and he said, I, I'm going back to heaven to get some things ready for later on, but in the meantime, I'm giving you my spirit. So Jesus left so that we could have the spirit of God in our lives. So we come into that transitional phase. And now we have just last week celebrated Pentecost, where the gift of the Holy Spirit came into the hearts and the lives of, of followers and disciples of Jesus. And they began to move out into the world to do the thing that Jesus had called them to. And so, in that um, uh, last chapter of Acts, of Acts chapter 2, uh, very succinctly,
succinctly, we see just a, a few things. There's a lot said there, but basically the believers were all in agreement, and they were obedient to Jesus' voice in their lives. Everyone received the things that God wanted to deposit in them, including the Holy Spirit. Jesus was revealed in the midst of it all and glorified, and people were saved and set free. That's Acts, Acts chapter 2. That's what it says. And, and, and we have entered into this new, this new phase, this new season that we're still in today, 2,000 years later. We're still here. And so we, are, so we are here today, one week into the season of Pentecost, which, as I mentioned uh, last week, lasts for six months long. It's the most significant, really, season in the, the church calendar being that long. The church has been born. The prophecy of Joel has been fulfilled. And now we come to the new church, the newborn church. And Peter is preaching his second recorded sermon. Acts chapter 2, we didn't look at it, but Acts chapter 2, the latter part, we have Peter's first sermon. And there we find that 3,000 people were instantly saved and responded to the, to the word that, that, that Peter gave to them truth that he helped them to understand. And now Acts chapter 3, a, a little bit of time has gone by, so I'm sure Peter has done some preaching, but, but this is the second sermon that we have recorded of Peter, and it's a dilly. He just, he just lays it all out once again, makes it absolutely clear so there can be no confusion, and, 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 it, and it tells us that, that the people were being added to the church daily. Wouldn't that be amazing if that were the case here? in Prince Edward Island, or in Canada, where we saw people being added to the church daily. No doubt it is happening across the nation, but if we saw it in our own community, we'd be into revival, and that would be amazing. In these days, it was amazing, and, and things were happening, and so Peter records the sermon, or Luke records the sermon that Peter gave, and, and in the midst of the revival that's breaking out, we see that the apostles were integrating themselves with the, with the people. They weren't just huddled up in, in, little, in little greenhouses hoping that God would do some great stuff. They were out there. And, and one of the things that the Jewish culture um, required of people is that they would show up at the temple regularly, daily even. And so every, every day the, the, the apostles, the disciples, would show up at the temple and they would go in, and, and by this time they had uh, sort of uh, cordoned off a, a corner of the temple, which was called Solomon's Porch, and it was a place where they could have some safety, if you will, and just kind of, uh, after, the, after the, uh, the, the, the events took place in the temple, then they'd go over there, and, and then they'd have their, their, their after meeting, their after service, and, and they would carry on um, uh, experiencing the power of God in their lives, and people were drawn to this activity afterwards because it was good stuff. There was amazing things going on in the lives and the hearts of people there. In chapter 2 it said many wonders and signs were done through the apostles at that time in that place. And so respecting these uh, uh, requirements of the culture and, and their, the Jewish religion they would go into the temple and every day they would walk past this lame guy sitting on the stairs. they would toss their coins his way. And, uh, and, and he would be grateful for it. He would go home at the end of the day. So this particular day, get this picture, this particular day, Peter and John are, are walking up the temple steps, and there's a lot of steps, and they're walking up the steps, and here's this guy sitting there, and he catches their attention. And they look at him, they make eye contact with him. And, and he's thinking, oh boy, I'm going to get some more coins from these guys. And they're all ready for, for what, he's all ready for what he needs. He's got his, his 
hand out or his, his, his cup out or whatever he, he whatever he got, he's, he's, he's out, he's ready. Because these guys are gonna they're gonna give me what I need. And they looked at him. They looked at him and they said, We don't have any silver and gold. We haven't got any loonies and zoonies. We haven't got any coins. We got nothing. But what we have, we're gonna give you. by the right hand and he says in the name of Jesus get up and walk doesn't it send shivers up and down your spine I mean that, that's incredible that's an amazing miracle because the man jumped up and started walking and leaping and dancing and praising God and, and, and going through the temple and all the people are looking that's, that's, that's the guy that, look what's going on everybody's attention was taken because God had moved in a powerful way. God had touched a life in a way that, that nobody was expecting, except maybe Peter and John. But nobody else was expecting that. Most of all, the lame guy. He wasn't expecting that. He got more than he bargained for. He got more than he asked for. He wasn't the least bit worried about, about alms anymore. He just got his feet under him. He's able to walk again. Well, again, it sounds like he never walked. He was lame from birth. He was given something that he never expected because he looked towards God. And God had mercy on him, and God touched him, and God restored his life. Incredible, incredible story. This is a marvelous story, but it's also a sign. It's a sign that Jesus' power is now being exercised through his people. It's a fulfillment, if you will, of Jesus' prophetic words to his disciples, that you will do great things. In fact, you'll do greater things than I've even done. And so the disciples are beginning to see the power of God at work in their lives in these incredible and huge ways. Jesus' power is being exercised through his people. This is a fulfillment of what Isaiah said in, in Isaiah chapter 35. He said, Then the eyes of the blind will be opened, and the ears of the deaf will be unstopped. The lame shall leap like deer, and the tongue of the deaf will sing. Folks, we live in a day in which we need to see these things happen. We need to see the fulfillment of these prophetic words of Isaiah and Jesus we need to see miracles among us. Because when miracles start to happen, people start to take notice. And people get turned to Jesus. And that's what it's all about. We don't need people to see us. We don't need people to see the Holy Spirit. We don't need people to see the church. We need people to see Jesus. Amen. Say it with me. We need people to see he is the one that changes lives. So Peter addresses the, the spiritual significance of the miracle, the man being the visible confirmation of what God has just done. And Peter says, get your eyes on Jesus. Don't look at me. Don't look at these uh, temple people or high priests or church people. or Don't look at anybody else. Look at Jesus. This is about Jesus. And if it's not about Jesus, then it's not worth looking at. But it's all about Jesus. And that's what you and I need to be about. It's all about Jesus. And the more we get all about Jesus, the more we're going to see the kingdom of God growing and established among us and in the world in which we live. I don't have to tell you that this is a broken world in which we live. I don't have to tell you that the needs all around us many of our own lives are huge. We need a miraculous touch of God over and over and over again. And that's the new page that's been turned. That's the new season that we live in. We are in the season where God is able and willing to do the things that we're reading about here, to do the things that the New Testament church has been called to. We are the New Testament church. We've been called to allow the power of Jesus to be exercised through our lives that the kingdom of God may grow and flourish. Get your eyes on Jesus. This man was healed because Jesus was glorified. 
is not in your authority over evil or your ability to accomplish something great or some, something miraculous, but the triumph is in God's authority over you and presence with you. So he talks about Jesus. These guys were sent out on a mission and they went out for a while and they came back and wow, these things happened, Jesus. It was amazing. And Jesus said, wait, 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 wait. It's not about you. It's about me and my Father and his kingdom. That's what it's about. The triumph is not in your authority over evil or your authority to, to uh, pray for a miracle. The triumph is in God's authority over you and his presence with you. Are you present with God this morning? Is God present with you this morning? That's his heart and his desire. That's where he wants to be. That's where he wants you to be. That's what he wants to do in your life and through your life. It's not what you do or for God or what, or what Peter did for God. It's what God does for you. The power to heal is in Jesus' name. Verse 16 said that very clearly. By Jesus' name, this man has experienced the same power of the resurrected Christ. He goes on to imply, who, by the way, you guys put to, put to death. Just, just saying. That's where the power has come to heal this man today. And by Jesus' name, he has experienced this power. So the story isn't even about healing. As amazing as that is. And what a great story it makes. But this story, this event, is about Jesus, about the name of Jesus. And when we talk about this season of Pentecost, that's what it's about. It's about Jesus. So often we talk about Pentecost, we get, we get focused on the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is all about Jesus. The Holy Spirit among us points us towards Jesus. Jesus is the one who God's favor is upon. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And if we went back to chapter 2, which we're not really going to do, we're not going to read it, but if you go back to verse 19, Peter says to the crowd, he says, this is the response that's required. You need to repent. You need to turn from your sins. You've been ignorant. But here is divine generosity. And here is free pardon that's for you. And all that's needed is for you to change your heart and your attitude towards Jesus. Why? Well, because he says there you receive forgiveness of sins. Even, even in the midst of this, this passionate thing that you have done, the passion of Jesus, you, you, you put him to death. There is forgiveness for you, even in the midst of this horrific thing that is just in our very recent history. And Peter goes on to say, there will be times of refreshing for you. It's the only time that the word has been used in, in the Greek writing, refreshing, and it's translated respite. Time of respite. How many of, need, how many of us need a time of respite? We need to step back and breathe because we're so busy and things are so hectic. We need to get into the presence of God. Take a step back. Only out of the presence of God in your life comes the power of God. That's what this lame man experienced. The presence of God brought the power of God into his life. Can you imagine if all of Israel had responded, had responded to, to, to Peter's message to them on, on those, those first days of when the church was getting its, its feet under it? Can you imagine if Israel had said yes to that invitation? How much quicker we might have seen the kingdom of God established in the world in which we live. But Israel said no. As a whole, they said, we don't want Jesus. We don't want this Messiah. We're going to wait. We're going to look for something different. Something that's, that's, that's more understandable to us. But they didn't understand Jesus. Well, that was not news to Peter. <laughs> and he goes on to recount. We read a little bit of that. Uh, he recounts the history of the prophets of old. And he said, uh, you know, this, this is what was foretold all through the Old Testament, all through the scriptures, all through the, the text that we have, all through the prophets that we have. This is what was foretold. And you, you are sons and daughters of the covenant of God. 
Next week we're going to talk a little bit more about the covenant of God. But, but you're sons and daughters of the covenant of God. That means that you're in relationship with God. And God has put all this stuff out here for you. And, and, and he's, he's made all this possible for you. And yet you said, no, I want it. And yet your children, you're the children, the sons and the daughters of this covenant that God has established with you. He came to bless them, verse 26, by turning them from their wickedness. Well, they hadn't turned when Jesus came. And now Peter's given them another opportunity. The gentle persuasion of the grace and the mercy of God. And today God's giving us another opportunity to plug into the, the resources that he has for you and me so that we can live our lives in this world in which we live. And the world in which we live is not very welcoming to, uh, to many people that walk in faith. We need the resources that God has for us. We need the power of his spirit in our lives. We need the grace and the mercy of Jesus every day. The gentle persuasion of our God. And today he pours out his grace and his mercy on us. And I want to ask you today, are we walking in it or are we resisting? The grace and the mercy that God is pouring into your life, pouring into my life, are we walking in it or are we walking against it? Are we resisting? Are we saying, God, no, I don't get it. I want to experience everything that you have for me. The proof is right in front of us. We might be just like the nation of Israel again today as we turn our back on the power of God that equips us to be the thing that God has called us to be, to be the church in the world today. Are we self-righteous? Are we stubborn? Are we interested in changing there's a story that's told of, uh, of um, Th Thomas Aquinas, who was a, um, a theologian in the 13th century. And uh, the theologian once approached the Pope when he was counting a vast sum of money. And uh, Aquinas said to, um, uh, to uh, um, where is it here? Oh, here it is. Thomas Aquinas approached the Pope, counting this vast sum of money, and he was told by the Pope, no longer can the church say, silver and gold have I none, because there's tons of money. No longer can, can we say the church has no silver and gold. And Thomas Aquinas says to him, the Pope, the Pope, neither can the church now say, arise and walk. Mm -hmm. And here we are 800 years later, and I'm not sure if the church is able to say today, arise and walk. At least the church in our, in our North American world, in our Western hemisphere that, that we're familiar with, we're not able to do that very well. We're not, we're not arising very well as a church. We're not walking very well as a church. We're not being the church that Jesus has called us to be. We're not being the church that we see in Acts chapter 3 and throughout the book of Acts and throughout the New Testament. We're not being that church because we're resisting and we're not walking in the things that God has made available for us. We're not walking well, and we're not experiencing much of the power of God. We're in our comfort zone many times. And it's good to be comfortable. It's good to just be in that place where it's familiar, and I, I know what's coming, and I know what tomorrow's going to look like. But the reality is, friends, we don't know what tomorrow looks like. We don't know what's coming down the pipe. We don't know what things will look like this time next month or next year. We have no idea. We have no idea what things will look like this time tomorrow. We need to surrender to the power of God. It's lovely to think that we can be in our comfortable zone. But there's no such place as a comfort zone for the one that's walking with God. Because we don't know what tomorrow holds. The truth of the matter is the Father wants to bless and empower you with his Holy Spirit. That's where we can get comfortable. To receive and to walk in the power of God's Spirit for you and for me. That's a comfortable place to be. He 
wants to glorify his son, and he wants to bring good into your life. I remember a few years back we went to visit uh, our daughter who was living in Australia at the time. We thought, wow, this is a, this is a good opportunity to go and, and see another part of the world. So we did. And on our way, uh, we planned to stop in New Zealand for a week and just check that out because it was kind of on the way. And uh, about three days before we were getting ready to go, I did something to my back. I don't know what it was. I, I, I didn't do anything. I didn't lift anything particularly strenuous. It just my and I had a history of uh, of every few months my back would go out. And I, I remember one time I um, I was to preach on a Sunday, and uh, um, I, I couldn't stand up, and so I got a, I got a stool and I and I stood sat on the stool at the front of the church and preached like this. <laughs> that was back in the days when I thought I was indispensable and they needed me. But anyway, <laughs> I, I had back trouble. And, and so here we were getting ready to go on an airplane uh, halfway across the world and, and uh, hours and hours of sitting and we didn't know how I was going to do it. I, could, I, can, I couldn't even pull the suitcase uh, through the airport. I, I, was, I, just, I wasn't in a wheelchair, but I probably should have been. I could barely move. And uh, we thought, this is great. Trip of a lifetime. We're going to Australia for, for a, a month, and, and here I am. My back's out, and I can't move. I can't do anything. But we're, we're not about to cancel the trip. Because we're like, we're going to go one way or the other. So we got to New Zealand, and a couple days later it was Sunday, and we picked out a local church, and we went to this church. Didn't know anything about it. And uh, we're sitting, you know, there, minding our own business, and the pastor's preaching a message, and uh, I don't remember what it was, but it was, it was uh, I remember it was fine, it was good, we were just, wow, it was a good church, it was a good place to be. And after, the, after he finished preaching the message, he said, there's somebody here in the congregation today that has a back, and we need to pray, a back that's out, and we need to pray for that person. And I was like, well, that can't be me, nobody knows me here. And I sat there for a couple of minutes, and, and he pushed the issue. And uh, he said, come on, there's other people that decide to come up for prayer for whatever. He says, you're not the ones I'm interested in. He said, I want the person here with the back. I want you to stand up and get prayed for. So probably after five minutes or so, I stood up, and I said, well, it's probably me. <laughs> and I, I, I came up, and, and he prayed for me. And you know, my back was healed that day. Healed that day. Okay. Never felt another back, but nothing, nothing compared to what it used to be. And that's like, what, 10, 12 years ago? God is able to do stuff. God is alive and well in, in our world, in our lives. He's here with us today. He's got stuff he wants to do in your life and in my life. He's not finished with us. Are we willing to surrender to him, to his power, to his mercy and to his grace and to the things that he wants to do. I think I put a title on this message today, Power, People, and Preaching on the Porch. A whole lot of P's there. P is a good letter. It's a good letter. There, there's, a, there's a lot of things that, that connect to that letter P. We've got Pentecost, and we've got Peter, and we've got prayer, and there's all kinds of things we could talk about in that letter P. But hopefully that letter P will help us to remember some of what we've been talking about today. That there is power for you and I to deal with the stuff that we're dealing with in our lives. There is power. There is available power to you and I. And there's people. There's people that are willing to proclaim, there's another P, proclaim the truth of Jesus and his ability to touch your life and, and my life. And there's people that are willing to stand up and proclaim and preach. There's people that are willing to say, yes, Jesus is alive and well in the house today. Jesus wasn't just for those guys 2,000 years ago. Jesus is for us today. Jesus is for all time. Jesus died for the sins of the entire world. And Jesus gave us his Holy Spirit so that we would have the power to walk out the life that we're walking in. And so these, these folks met in that safe place uh, uh, in, in the porch, in Solomon's porch. They met there, and they experienced the power of God. And we need to find places to meet and experience 
the power of God. Whether it's church or not, we need to find places to meet and experience the power of God because we are in the season of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit is alive and well, bringing people, bringing men and women and boys and girls to the name of Jesus. And we need miracles. We need people to take us by the hand and say, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. In the name of Jesus, begin to live your life. We need miracles in our lives, in our world today, as much as ever, because we need to find Jesus. In the midst of our circumstances, we need to find Jesus. But here's the catch. What you and I think that we need is not likely what God knows that we need. Did you hear me? What you and I think that we need is not likely what God knows that you and I need. There's that lame beggar thinking, if I could just get a few more coins, that wasn't what he needed at all. He probably never begged again, can I imagine? He didn't need coins. He needed the power of Jesus in his life. That's what transformed him. That's what gave him life. That's what gave him hope. That's what gave him courage to walk out the calling on his life. Surrender to the power of the Spirit of God today and what he wants to do in your life through Jesus. Now some that are listening today are new in the faith and some have been around the faith for decades. This word of God is for everybody. Doesn't matter if you're two years into the faith or if you're 20 years in the faith or if you're two days in the faith. It doesn't matter. Jesus wants to get a hold of your life and he wants to give you the resources that you need to live well in the world that we live in today. Jesus still has more for you. I don't care if you've been walking with the Lord for 60 years. Jesus still has more for you. We're going to pray, and then uh, we're going to uh, have another hymn, and then we're going to wrap up the service. Uh, but if there are people here that would like prayer, please stay behind and uh, give us an opportunity to pray with you for the needs that are in your life. If you're watching online today, you want to put something in the comment section there, we'll try and follow up and get back to you on that. But make sure that if you have a need today, and most of us do, that you access the resources that God has for you. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence today. We thank you for your calling upon our lives to go out and live our lives as fully and completely as we can with the resources and the tools that you've given us. Fill our hearts and fill our lives with your Holy Spirit today so that we may experience the power of God and we may see the glory of Jesus all around us. Father, how we need you. How we need you. In this broken world that we're living in. With our broken lives that we're surviving with. How desperately we need you. Come and touch us. Fill us afresh today. I can remember back in 1977, uh, Jesus took me by the hand uh, through a preacher. You might have heard, tell, heard tell of uh, Billy Graham. How many have heard tell of Billy Graham? Well, Billy Graham was the preacher, and uh, today the preacher is John, and uh, he took me by the hand because I was going through depression, panic attacks, and fear and that was 45 years ago and when I decided that I was going to let go and let God into my life he came in and I realized that very week that I am no longer depressed I was no longer having panic attacks 
and I haven't had one bout of that in 45 years. So I know there's lots of people, Christian and non-Christian alike, that that's not your story. But uh, the power is still available today. It doesn't matter. If you want to be healed for 45 more years, you might be 80 today. Want to be healed for 45 more years? Possible. But nonetheless, uh, we just recommend just what John was talking about. And silver and gold have we none, but uh, as what we have, we share and encourage that if you have a need, that you as well can be taken by the hand. And this could be the day that makes all the difference for the rest of your life. So we just uh, recommend. This song says, my soul in sad exile was out on life's sea. That's where I was back, back in 77. Out on life's sea. So burdened with sin and distressed till I heard a sweet voice saying, make me your choice. And I entered the haven of rest. And I've had that rest now for 45 years and uh, recommend Jesus very strongly. So we... Uh, Say so in this song, The Haven of Rest. My soul in sad exile was out on life's sea, so burdened with sin and distress. Till I heard a sweet voice saying, make me your choice. And I entered the haven of rest. Oh, well, I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest. I will sing. Tempest. 